All right, Skip, what's going on with LeBron? By the way, that was a weird mix of movies. Right? The Grinch stole Christmas. It's not Christmas, LeBron. But anyway, yeah. it's fine with me. I like them all. They that would be an interesting Classics. evening to spend with your kids. Stephen A. Smith, I think I'm really liking this LeBron. I, I'm hoping that it's not just that kind of petulant child that can be in LeBron that we occasionally see bubble to the surface occasionally. Haven't seen it much lately, but I'm hoping that this is the angry LeBron that I've often said on this show I love. I love to see him angry on the floor. I love to see him just quit worrying about what everybody else is thinking and just say, I'm going to attack the basket and this basketball game and, and pretty much play the way Russell Westbrook plays. When LeBron gets mad about something, you want to talk about an unstoppable force of nature, that's when he can be at his greatest. So I'm hoping this is the LeBron who finally just sat back and said, you know, I don't give a you know what about Golden State. I'm, he, he's just basically saying again and again through his words and his actions, bring him on. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about how Terry Stott should have won Coach of the Year over Steve Kerr, the Golden State coach who did win. And yeah, I'm going to talk about how, you know, you can question whether Steph Curry could have should have been the unanimous MVP because there's a difference between best player and most valuable to your team, which indicates LeBron is making the case for himself, maybe being more valuable to his team. The case that his GM made public yesterday, LeBron is the most valuable player to his team. Again and again, LeBron is, he is daring to rattle the cage of Steph Curry and company. And for me, Stephen A, I, I love it because I don't think it's the smartest thing to do unless you really believe you can back it up. So I'm starting to think this LeBron is starting to love the way he and Kyrie and Kevin Love have started to gel and click. They've become a force, a three-point shooting force, Threveland, as I've been calling them, the Threveland Cavaliers. And those big three uh, have, have really blended and meshed in ways that, that I didn't think was quite possible. Love watching them. And I think Le LeBron is loving playing with them and thinks that he finally has the supporting cast. He obviously didn't have because of injuries in the finals. But finally, he has one that he, he can trust around him. So I, I think LeBron right now is as confident as he's ever been at this stage of the playoffs. Even in his days with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, I think he's even more confident right now, which leads me to you were so hyped, so excited about Oklahoma City, Golden State. And for me, this is the one. The epic one is this one. LeBron versus Steph sure. rematch. This is the one I can't wait for. Again, sure. I, I, I hope Oklahoma City takes it to the last drop, like you said. I hope it's an epic game seven back at Golden State between Thunder and Warriors. I don't think it will be. But this one could be epic. This one could be seven games. Well, this one could be because... I, I think LeBron likes to play against Golden State, and I love the way he does play because he's big enough and strong enough and so skilled as a dribbler and passer, he can control the tempo against the Golden State Warriors, as we saw him do solo last year in the finals when they're up two games to one with game four in his house. Go ahead. Well, well, keep in mind that, you know, obviously this is the epic matchup. I was just talking about yeah, before the right. finals because you don't want to wait until the finals to have the epic matchup. I mean, uh, considering how many times I've reported how badly the Golden State wants Cleveland yeah. because of, of people questioning that whether or not their title was fraudulent, yeah. that's a very, very big deal. And, I, and I'm glad you've seen the light because I love what I'm seeing from LeBron right now. I love the sense of attitude that he may have. I love him looking at this love fest that Steph Curry is receiving. And it's not the, the word resentment is not appropriate because if you know anything about Steph Curry, he seems to be like a really cool dude uh, and the whole bit, incredibly likable and the whole bit. We all understand that. But it's such a love fest going on where, where there's an absence of any cynicism, skepticism, That's negativity true. whatsoever. Yep. That just does not seem real in today's world it's like you're looking at him saying there's no one in hell that's perfect somebody somebody is 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 is, is, is wrong somewhere somebody 
everybody's got imperfections. And if you're LeBron James, the way you've been so heavily scrutinized over the last decade or so, to, it, it's not about the success that Steph Curry gets. It's no doubt about that. It's about the flagrant love affair that the media and everybody else seems to have with Steph Curry at this moment in time. Is it, does, it, does it rile you up? Does it annoy you to some degree? Do you find yourself feeling in the crevices, in the quiet crevices of your soul, how unfair that may be? It wouldn't surprise me at all if that were the case with LeBron James. So with that being said, there's one way that LeBron James could put an end to all of this. That's get to the finals. Pray that, OK, that Go, OK, uh, Golden State gets there too. Yep. And, sh and shut this down once and for all by going up against Steph Curry and beating him. And I definitely believe that that's the kind of mentality that he has. But I also think it's important and fair to point this out. Every accolade that Steph Curry has received thus far, he has absolutely positively earned and deserved. And as a result of that, here's what this comes down to. King James. Lost in the finals last year. To me, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't even be a loss with him. He was a one-man army, and he didn't have any help. This year would be different. You lose this year with Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving. You ain't the king anymore. That's number one. And number two, you will officially be the past if you lose to Steph Curry this go-round. Two-time champion, two-time reigning league MVP, best single season record in NBA history during the regular season. He will, I mean, I, I mean, Jersey sales, Kobe was number two. Yep. Uh, Steph Curry was number one. I'm telling you right now, LeBron's going to make his money. He's already made his money. He's an astute businessman. He's all of these different things. But if he loses to Steph Curry again, he will officially be the past. Steph Curry will have officially arrived, cementing his status yep. as the future. I think LeBron senses that, and I think that LeBron is going to be more ready than anybody to stop that. It's just whether or not he's going to have help. LeBron James is not going to fall beneath this challenge. He will embrace it, he will accept it, and he will rise to the occasion. The question is, who on Cleveland will join him? Okay. Here's my issue with everything you just said, and I do agree with it. I think this is dangerous on LeBron's part because of this. And I don't want to overstate my case here because biggest Michael Jordan fan you will find right here covered him in Chicago. But I sense a little bit of Jordan in Steph. I sense that he looks for the slightest of slights to re-motivate himself, the smallest of reasons to wreak revenge and prove someone wrong about their doubts about Steph or his basketball team. That's Jordan-esque to me. You remember how Michael would almost make up things that somebody said or uh, said about him or did to him. And you'd say, well, what are you talking about? I told you that story about Calipari coaching the Nets. And, and Calipari liked to jump up and down the sideline and put on a little bit of a show. And Michael, during one of the playoff games, was pointing to him throughout the game as he scored point after point and just shot him out of their own gym at the Meadowlands. Yep. And I asked Michael after the game, what's up between, what's the beef between you and Cal Perry? He said, I, I don't know him. I just don't like the way he acts on the sideline. Well, well again, it, it was sort of beneath Michael to do that, but, but he needed that that night in that game. Steph's got a little bit of that in him. Now, this is just me. And this is going to be the bottom line if this epic rematch happens. I believe Steph is a little mentally tougher than LeBron is. That's just me. He's shown me that to this point. If, if that's true, then this is really a dangerous game that LeBron is, is playing because he's openly, to me, challenging Steph. Steph will take it personally what LeBron said about his coach, that Terry well, Stott should have been the, the coach of the year, obviously. I doubt that. I, I doubt that part. I think Steph Curry has enough to take personal with the personal challenges that are going to come in his direction. Let's make sure we understand here. We can't count out OKC. Coach say OKC is going to have something to say about yep. this. They're not going away. And, and, and Steph Curry is going to deserve all the credit in the world. In order for him to win this championship, I would say James Harden, but he was out for most of that series. But then you're talking about him going up against Damian Lillard, then from Damian Lillard, you know, to, to, to Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant yep. to LeBron. If he wins the title this year, <laughs> that would be his life, likely path to success. Yep. If he pulls it off, it's undeniable 
every, that everything that you're saying will ring true. But if there's anybody that can question what you got inside your chest when it really counts, it's the combination of Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, and then in the aftermath of that, of course, LeBron. You don't know how much that could take out of Steph Curry potentially yep. going up against KD and Russell Westbrook. So LeBron is going to be ready. He's going to be focused, and, and I think it would be stupid for anybody to harbor any level of negativity towards LeBron. This is what you want. When you're talking about a championship being on the line, you want these headlines, you want these storylines, you want the possible attitude, you want the antagonism, you want people ruffling one another's feathers, you want all of those side headlines to come into sure. the equation because those make the difference between champions and wannabes. And I love the fact that with Steph Curry being on this surreal run, LeBron James figuratively speaking, has got his hands up like, excuse me, have you forgotten I who I am? I hear you. I love it. And I, I hear love him. it. I, I, I think to me, to me, that's LeBron James showing me that more than at any other time what a champion he is. Yep. Because that's how champions respond to that. Okay. That's how champions Great. respond. Okay, question, not to put you on the spot, but w would you agree that Steph Curry is better than he was one year ago today? Yes. How much better? Give me a percent. He's, he's X percent better than he was last year at this time. I think that he's about 40 percent better because now wow. he's not trying to learn how to win. He knows how to well, win. Well, that's a lot. And I, I, think I was going to go they, 20, they, they, and I thought that was they, high. No, no. Whew. No, no, no. I, I think it's about 40 percent from the percent. It's not, it has nothing to do with his game. It's when he throws up shots now, no matter what the moment. He knows everything that he's doing. He knows what he's doing. It's the bait and switch. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's luring you into. He knows what his objective is. He knows what he's going to do, and he knows that he's a few steps ahead of most, op of most opponents. That's what's going on here. He was trying to discover all of those things en route to becoming a champion and a league MVP. Now he's mastered it, and you have to figure out how to stop him instead of him figuring out how to beat you. And I think that's what makes him exponentially better. But I would also like to say this. I think LeBron's better. Mm. The numbers don't show it. No. But because Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving are there, and Tyron Lue now is your coach instead of David Blatt, and J.R. Smith is more productive. J.R. Smith is shooting better from three. Yep. Kyrie Irving is shooting better from three. Kevin Love is shooting better from three. Now you're giving the ball to Channing Fry. So LeBron doesn't have to do as much as he did last year, and people are assuming because of numbers that he's not better. To me, he's actually better. He's smarter. He's more diplomatic in terms of how he uses and expends his energy. He knows when to take over, when to step back. He's a constant presence on both ends of the floor. And now he's got the attitude because I think against Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant, even though he would ball because he's after a championship, he's not nearly as inspired about, going, about the prospect of going up against them as he would be about going up against Steph Curry and I, Golden State. I hear Not you. just because Golden State beat him, but because Steph Curry is getting all of this acclaim. Yep. And LeBron is like, wait a minute. You forgot who the best in the world is? Okay. Let I got me remind you. That's why, bottom That's line of like. this discussion, LeBron is speaking from a position of extreme confidence because he, he's playing his most effective basketball of his career. All-around game, effective with the coach that he believes in and a supporting cast he trusts at the highest level that he's ever trusted a supporting cast. I get all that, but I'm going to say it one more time. The MVP of last year's finals was Andre Iguodala. If, if the Golden State Warriors go back to back and win another title this year, Andre will not be the repeat MVP, I don't think. I'm pretty sure it will be Steph Curry. But you're saying that LeBron James is, you know, he's, he's focused, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I'm saying to you, just like I said Golden State wants Cleveland, I get the feeling LeBron wants Golden all State. Right. Well, I do too. And I'm saying Good. to you, we, we, all the years we've looked at LeBron play, when have we, other than Boston, yep. when have we seen an opponent that we can definitively say LeBron wants 
that guy. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing I, right I now. I am too. And I that's agree. why I can't wait. So let's just that's get this Western Conference thing over with. Let's just get on to the finals. Listen, you guys. No, <laughs> no, because that's going seven. Yeah. But you don't, don't need to sell. Okay, you guys are now. hype men right now. I don't I, know how excited you're. Just, you're getting everybody yeah, fired up. Yeah. Not that we need to sell this, but seriously. Let's play. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just being. I'm just being real but, about but how I feel. I'm here you, for a reason. You're making us I all salivate wait. over here. It's going to be great. We're excited. Hey, speaking yeah. of great, will it be great up in Lambeau? Stephen A. That bad man. He's expected.